All right, hope everyone had a good day. So first things first, we'll look at the E-mini. I didn't actually trade the E-mini today, nor were the spider, only traded 4x. But, uh, kind of, I don't really have anything drawn, but, you know, the past few days, here's the session breaks, a lot of sideways price action, and that's just because, you know, why do we have, oh, okay, well, I'll keep them on, but, you know, here's a 60 minute chart, big spike channel, three pushes, but, you know, just look at the range, we're obviously in a trading range, you know, here, let me try it like this, here, this will work, so here's the e-mini very tight trading range you know probably breakout mode at this point we've gone sideways for 20 bars you know probably at least a little more up to you know some sort of better wedge you know here's a monthly chart possible parabolic buy climax and wedge so parabolic wedge first push second push third but again very tight channel on the monthly chart I do think we'll get we'll close we'll <clears throat> excuse me I think we'll fall below the August high at some point and you know, probably around a you know a hundred points away or so but as far as right now daily chart sideways so I expect a lot of sideways price action in trading range day and that's what we got over here you know, in terms of yesterday and today, and even Monday on the 13th, well, actually, Monday was a holiday, but that was Friday. You know, expect everything to reverse, you know. We're trading down, we're low in the range, sharp reversal up, and a small second leg, but by the time we get the breakout, you know, price pulls back. So, you know, the market senses this is very fair, and... You know, that's what causes the trading range. It's just fair value. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's dangerous to trade when the range gets, you know, less than three points. And really, even when it's three points, it's really, it's not say, it's very, it's very difficult. You have to be really careful because if you think about it, you know, the market, it races down and probes down to a point where, there's no sellers, and then buyers come in aggressively, and it's got to reverse, and it does the same thing to the upside. It races up until there's no buyers, and then it's got to pull back, and aggressive bears come in, and then it races down, no sellers, races up, no buyers, races down, no sellers, races back up. And the range contracts and gets smaller and smaller and smaller until the point where the market, you know, it has to test and see what's up here or what's down here. And then you get this and this, and it's very easy when you're buying with limit orders, when the range gets only about a point, two points tall, or even three points, it's very easy to get trapped on this and miss this out. So, you know, yes, this and this goes in, you know, yes, you could buy this low and buy more lower and get out break even, but, you know, that's still, I think you're just, you'll do better by not doing that. You know, it's kind of like, you know, mo you can trade profitably buying high, you know, buying up here, scaling and lower and scalping out, you know, with the small profit and, you know, break even on the loss, if that makes sense, or, you know, selling here and scaling in and getting out break even, but really, you know, try and buy low and sell high. And that, oh, real quick, I want to talk about binary choices, you know, Al, there's a video. There's a video on the the Money Show. It's an interview by Al from Al, and it's called "Are You Using the?" It's not one second. Sorry, it, it's by Al, and it's called "Trade Profitably with No Indicators." And you know, just type that in YouTube, and it's it's on the Money Show channel, but. Al, one thing he talks about is binary decisions. You know, one reason Al uses binary decisions is it kind of creates a decision tree form and it makes his trading very simple. So think about it. You know, when you're 
when you're right here and you see this, you know, start with this. Is it a trend or a trading range? Well, it's confusing. It's clearly a trading range. Therefore, I want to buy low, sell high. And it rules out what not to do, you know. Here, are we in a trend or a trading range? Well, you can call it a leg in a trading range, but at the end of the day, but the reality is it's so tight that you're probably better off selling or selling a pullback. You know, here, full breakout, very tight channel, you're probably better off buying a pullback or you know, buying now, because it's you know, it's still a small pullback trend basically within a large trading range. Uh so yeah, think in terms of binary decisions and I'll talk more about that later. And uh, if you have more questions about that, just comment below. So, you know, really, I'm not going to say a lot about the MNN. It's, it's a trading range, you know. It's when the market's going up, bears are selling. When it's going down, bulls are buying. And, you know, the range is getting smaller and smaller. So, you know, big up, big down, big up, big down. It's just, it's triangle. Triangle is a breakout mode situation. The market's deciding. Is going to break out the downside, or it's going to break out the upside. Where are we on the? I want to see where we're at on the Dow Jones. Oh, we're yeah, clearly well below the 2200. I have to say, I still think we'll test up to it, but you know, I don't think it's all that important. So I really. I've been trading a lot of a lot more forex than anything else recently, and you know primarily just because you know I like forex, and the biggest reason is I honestly wanted to trade more. I wanted to have more flexibility in the times I could trade. And before I go into that, so the two reasons was flexibility with time. And the other reason was I was trading the spider, and honestly, it was just kind of I, I didn't I didn't like it because you know for me you know I I could look at other stocks and whatnot, but it really they were all pretty close to the same. You know, if I'm watching Facebook and you know the spider, or if I'm watching Apple. You know, usually if one market's trending strongly, the rest are. So it's kind of, and if one's in a trading range, well, everything else is in a trading range. So I really wanted to try Forex just because it it gives me, you know, all sorts of markets. Second, the biggest reason was I really like Forex, always have. And, you know, I really like how you can trade just about at any point of the day. So, you know, for example, as I'm videoing this, it's about five, five thirty in the afternoon at night, and I'm about to. I'm. I plan on trading some uh, tonight. At least, you know, plan on taking a trade or two. So that's nice. I really like that. It's. It's also. I'm getting more into. You know, longer term trades. You know, taking a few. You know, 60 minute trades or 120 minute trades, and then mainly, you know, watching other markets. So, for example, you know, trading the euro dollar in the morning and maybe swing trading a different market on a higher time frame. There's just a lot more flexibility. So, anyways, I'll just kind of, we can look over, we'll look at the euro dollar, and really, you know, here's a pain trade. You know, you get a basically a rally up but it's it doesn't look very strong you know look at this rally so first off when you see this look to the left big trading range second where are the strong consecutive bear bull bars you know this is strong but it's really it's not great you know bad ball with their tails you know two bull bars big bear bars bull bar bad ball with another bull bar bad ball with their and it just doesn't look strong. And then, you know, when you get something like this, you've always got to be concerned of what it looks like on a higher time frame. So, for example, uh, oh, there, that's why. You know, it, it's going to look like, you know, this. Three bear bars. So, 
you know, is this a pullback into a spike and pullback channel, or is this a strong enough reversal that any test up's probably going to try and lead to a major trend reversal, which I think it is, and that's ultimately ultimately what happened. And you can see channeling it down, probably always in long, but you got to be careful because. You know, if you're selling down here, you really need to stop up here and probably need to scale in because there's the risk of this. So, and then you get a strong rally. But you can see, you know, look at these bars, tails on top. We're not even back to this. And this is, you know, it's one of those trades where bulls will buy it, especially buy below and scale in, or they'll buy above and scale in. I don't think many bulls would buy above necessarily, but I think it's a logical target. And the reason it's not really a great buy is because it's a high one buy, you know, or I wouldn't really even call it a high two, but you can, you know, high one, high two. But it's a consecutive buy climaxes and then a first leg down, probably going to get a second leg down. And it's, it's, it's big risk. So it's, you have a low probability trade buying above here with a big risk, you know. The odds are sellers above. So if you buy, put your stop down here, you're already risking a lot compared to the pot potential reward and then when you buy down here you've got the issue of you know better you know your risk is less and you probably will get a bounce but is this a trading range or is this a pullback I think it's a trading range you know a pullback is when you think it will the price will resume so you know kind of like well here I think this is a pullback because we'll probably get a second leg down Still probably a pullback. Still probably a pullback, you know. And here, you know, I, I think that was a trading range. But we got the bear breakout. So anyway, spike, pullback channel. You know, spike, three pushes down. And then, you know, very tight channel down. And you've got to be careful about buying. And this is one of those low probability events where, you know, price keeps trying to bottom. Consecutive bottoms. And right here, you know, here's... I, it's basically a high four. So we had a spike to a, you know, first push up, second push. It's kind of like a double bottom, bear breakout, and then two small legs down. So I'd call it, you know, high one, high two, bear breakout, high one, high two, where this high two was basically a nest of two legs down. And you always got to be careful when you get a really, really big bar. This is a pain trade. And if you think about Al's, it's video, it's his third video on the candlesticks, and I think it's it's chart basics in price action. It's like video 2C. He talks about the pain trade, and what he talks about is beginners see this bar, they see it rallying, they see a strong reversal, and they just get paralyzed. This probably went down really fast, and the traders were just selling. And when you see this, especially when you see follow through, you're probably going to get a measured move down. So just sell. Stop up here. You'll probably get a measured move down, which you did. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's really it for that market. We'll look at the Euro uh, Japanese yen. I'm sorry, the USD Japanese yen. I really like it. I like the Japanese yen. Or the dollar Japanese yen cross, uh, primarily because you know it, it moves fairly decently at you know like right now, or you know late in the evening. Now let's see. So just gotta figure out I'm right here. Huh, I guess I didn't really watch. Hmm. Uh, there was something I was going to talk about. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I couldn't really remember. I remember trading this last night, but I couldn't really remember. I was trying to think of one thing that stuck out with me before I went to bed last night. And it was over here. So we had a strong breakout, and then sideways for about 20 or 30 bars, 
you can see, you know, Bears tried to make a sell off. The odds are first, a sec, the first leg down would fail to get a second leg up. Tried to sell off again, and they tried again, but every time they failed. And then we got, you know, strong breakout, strong follow through. At this point, when you get this, the odds are high you'll get a, another leg up. Now, very often, in my opinion, this happens, where you will get a measured move of the breakout bar, the initial one. You know, maybe even we'll say both of these bars for the breakout bar. You'll get a measured move up, but not with the follow through bar. And, you know, either way, it's good enough for, you know, a little more up. And then, you know, it looks like we did not get a measuring gap, but then sideways more. Bears tried to sell off, and then we found buyers. And I didn't. I was obviously asleep at this point. At this point. And here's the day session. So, you know, we tried to form a double bottom here, and you know the bulls are rallying, but you know, go back to what I said about binary decisions. And what I was talking about, is this a trading range or a trend? Well, sure. Higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. So, yeah, it's a bull channel. But, you know, to me, it's a trading range. Trading range, broad channels, they're the same thing. The same process happens. <clears throat> but, you know, one's just slope more. Sorry, my voice is getting a little hoarse. But, uh... <clears throat> so let me see what else you know and then we rallied and then here you know we're getting a bull breakout so you know this is a good example of this is probably going to be a successful breakout of a bear channel which is a low probability event it's a pain trade because traders are not expecting they're not expecting it, which means you have trap traders. And that is what so trap traders bears will even use any pullback to buy, bulls will use any pullback to sell. And yeah, so we're I think it's a strong enough for at least a little more up. You know, it's possible we get something like that. It's possible that we get something like that. I don't think we will. You know, well, we might. I mean, it takes you up to here. But in any case, we'll see. Uh, what else? I'll talk about this breakout real quick. So, you know, when you see this, when you see a bar close on its high that's significantly bigger than the others, and it closes, you know, above the past. 100 bars, you're probably going higher. If you wait for here, even more higher probability that you go higher. So, you know, you just buy, scalp out, or you buy, and maybe you get out below, or maybe you get out below here. You know, I wouldn't sell yet. I think mean, it's still a minor reversal. Probably not enough to test up for a major reversal. But you can see. You have disappointed bulls who bought up here, scaled in, and you're getting out of break even with the profit on the second. Here's the Euro Canadian dollar, and as you can see, very uh, good day for the Euro. And, you know, bad day for the Canadian dollar, but it's so over here, you know, trading range. Big up, big down, big up, big down. And then, you know, look at this bar. This is pretty pretty strong rally. Which, then here, breakout, more follow through, more follow through. We're going higher, buy for any reason, and, you know, bears are getting out, and we'll probably go sideways. But it's a strong reversal on the daily chart that I think, you know, we may get a little more up. Same thing with the Japanese yen. Alright, that's all the time I have. Thanks.